I am so thrilled right now to introduce our, our next um, speaker. I love this lady here, uh, Tammy Schumann um, from Family Counseling Centers and a co-founder of the Institute of Child Psychology. Um, I'm a big fan of their work. And so Tammy is here. I've never, Tammy, I, 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 I can see your screen and I can see you. Hey, and you can hear me and everything. I can't even hear you. This is amazing. Yay. Look at us work. <laughs> yeah, make yeah. it boom. work for us. I'm so thankful you are. here. Um, I want to give you your full 15 minutes. And so you take it away, but we're just welcome and glad you're here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Um, I'm a working parent. My husband and I are working full time from home with three kids. So 12 year old, six year old and three year old. And I'm a former freaking teacher. And I've got both my parents are teachers, both my husband's parents are teachers, and we don't have this figured out. So for the love of God, everybody just breathe. If our family can't figure this out, and I'm a child psychologist, and a former teacher, and the grandparents can't figure this out, no one's got this figured out. So I just like want to give you guys some grace here that we've never done this before. We've never lived through a global pandemic. So give yourself some time to breathe. I, I feel like parents are suffocating on expectations that they cannot meet. We were not meant to do this kind of work. Now, I think we all have it within us to parent. Uh, we have it in us to, to be good at our jobs. And some of us are great at stay, being a staying home parent and homeschooling our kids. But now we're being asked to do everything. And you know, this, there are so many scary things for parents right now, whether it's, you know, be becoming sick or making someone else sick, their jobs being laid off, if it's about their child's mental health or their child being able to succeed at school. I think we just have to remember that our number one job right now is just keep our families together. The teaching will come, but I think so much of the stress right now has been related to school and, and to money. So we're all going through this really, what we call collective grief. And that's what we keep talking. I, I run a practice also family counseling centers. And that's really what all the therapists on my team are talking about is collective grief. And grief is, it's not a linear model. We know grief, like we have Elizabeth Kubler-Ross who said, you know, it, grief tends to go into the denial, anger, depression, bargaining, acceptance. And now um, Kessler has said that um, it, finding meaning is part of this. But as I'm going through this pandemic and being quarantined myself, or self-isolating, um, quarantine just sounds so catastrophic, like the movie Outbreak or something. But I can tell you on any given day, I have gone through all six of those, sometimes several times a day. I feel like I'm rapid cycling bipolar right now with all the big emotions that are coming on. And I'm a trained friggin' psychologist, and that's how I feel. So I just want parents to know that how they're feeling emotionally is completely friggin' normal for what we are dealing with. Um, what we call this in psychology is flipping our lids when we become really emotional, because this is about emotion regulation. And when we feel that there's danger, when we feel that there is a threat, the threat response in our brain and our body goes off. Our brain stem, which is in charge of our body and our central nervous system, then we have our limbic system here, which is our emotions, they start to fire and says there must be a threat, something's going on. And our ability, our prefrontal cortex, our upstairs brain that's in charge of rational thinking does this, Pew! and we flip our lids and we are not the best versions of ourselves. We lose it, we yell, we panic, we buy too much toilet paper, we drink too much, we do all kinds of things. Maybe we just sit in Netflix all day long or we micromanage our children or we yell at our husbands or our wives. We are trying to keep it together, but literally your brain is not allowing you to do that. We could take your brain in panic mode, put it through an MRI scan and see that you have lost blood flow to the part of the brain that says, this is not a good idea right now. I should not be screaming at my children right now. I should not grab that second bottle of wine right now. This is not a great idea because your body is saying, I just have to protect, protect, protect. And what we need to know. So if you know this about your brain, we think we better deal with the part of the brain right now that's losing it, which is our emotional brain and our downstairs brain, which is all about our body. 
So understand that when we go into this kind of flipping our lid state, people tend to go one of two ways. They go into hyper arousal. These are your over functioners people. Um, it can also be people who uh, get panicky, who um, are ordering people around, they're making lists, like they're, you know, checking the news constantly, they're very hyper vigilant. And then you've got the second set of people who completely check out, who get, we call that dissociative, they, they get lethargic, they get depressed, they don't want to get out of bed, sometimes they're in denial about what's going on. And then you get people who essentially are under functioners. So just because someone isn't, you know, watching CNN constantly and they aren't screaming and not yelling doesn't mean they're not impacted by what's going on. It's just the fact that they're in a freeze response. They're shutting down instead of doing a fight flight response because the brain responds to to threat in, in four ways. You either want to fight, you want to freeze in place, you want to run away or you collapse, you check out. So people either go into fight flight or they go into freeze collapse. And so you've got these over versus under functioners who are, who are anxious because of what's going on. So the question is, are you an under functioner or an over functioner? I really highly recommend Brene Brown's. Um, she has a podcast and she talks about this in much more depth about over versus under functioning in terms of the anxiety response. And I'm definitely, my husband and I are self-proclaimed over functioners. We're going to micromanage everything and we're going to make lists and we're going to be cleaning the house and we're going to be putting the kids to school and taking on projects. And other people are the opposite where they completely shut down. And I have had days where I have shut down. But let's just take a look really quick here. And I want to give you some strategies and how to really quickly deal with this. Please know, unless you deal with the downstairs brain and, and making sure your physiological and safety needs are met first, it's really difficult to do hard things past that, the really complex tasks. So give yourself a break there. So as we go into regulating yourself, I am literally giving you the plan that my husband and I are using right now. I was like, what is working? And these are the things I recommend to my clients as a psychologist as well. So we always, I prefer to use a bottom up approach because we're really dealing with our safety needs. We're going to deal with our body first. And this is how we regulate children too. Um, so we're going to work with the brain stem first, which is all about our central nervous system. And when we calm and regulate our bodies, we will then, it's a domino effect where we will move to our upper brain areas where we can do more complex things and get our thinking in line. But first, let's deal with the body. And when we do this, we release neurotransmitters like GABA, dopamine, serotonin, and we stimulate the vagus nerve, which is in charge of getting your lid back on, essentially. Then we're going to move into the limbic system and we're going to relate and try to connect with people. But first, we're going to take care of our bodies then we're going to try to connect with people if we can and then and only then we move to reasoning which is going to be about gratitude and positive thinking but it's really difficult to to practice gratitude and to practice positive thinking if your body feels like it's under siege so i usually recommend with clients this bottom-up approach so here are just a few things you can do we, we have this on our instagram page and our facebook page hopefully you guys can see this I want to give you five easy strategies. Maybe they'll be easy, maybe they won't. But I mean, this is literally my day right now. So tapping. Now you can Google this tapping. This comes from EMDR, eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy. I'm a trauma therapist. So I use tapping all the time with clients when we're processing traumatic memory. It integrates essentially the right and left hemisphere of the brain. So what I want you to do is you're going to connect your thumbs like this. And you're going to put your hands like this. And I want you to think about a time where you were calm, where you were safe, where you weren't stressed. And maybe that's a made up place because maybe you cannot go to a place like that. You're going to do some deep breaths. And as you think about that calm place, you are going to tap right, left, right, left, right, left. And what that's doing is integrating the right and left hemisphere. And that's going to help calm your butt down. We use this, um, it integrates the left hemisphere, which is about logic and language with the right hemisphere, which is all about connection, creativity, and empathy. So Google butterfly hug, tapping, the tapping method is another one you can look at. Again, tapping, do this with your kids. So we, in EMDR, again, we use this a grounding method called calm place. So I really love tapping, keeping an eye on the time here. I have way too much stuff to give you. Mindfulness and breathing. I'm not going through a mindfulness script with you, but. You know what's a great thing is the Calm app, and I use this every single morning for the last year. Before my kids get up, I set my alarm 10 minutes early, and I go downstairs, sit with my dogs, 
and I listen to a guided meditation or just nature sounds, the ocean, birds chirping, and just bloody well breathe. Breathing is the fastest way to deactivate a panicked brain, the fastest. So deep breathing, it's a legit thing. You activate the vagus nerve, it deactivates the limbic system, the amygdala, the, the brain stem, and gets your lid back on. Really good stuff. Gratitude works with the upstairs brain. Gratitude literally rewires your brain for positivity by releasing dopamine and serotonin, which bounces out depression and anxiety. It has been shown to help with sleep, being more effective at work, improved executive functioning, and having a greater essentially appreciation for life. So gratitude is a wonderful thing, is finding small things that we're thankful for can rewire our brain in particular, the right hem temporal hemisphere, and it will help with that piece. Move your body. So I know it goes to say we should all be getting exercise. Hard when you're chasing children. Well, maybe it's you're getting exercise because you're chasing children. But the more you move your body, the more you have something called GABA release, G-A-B-A. It's an inhibitory neurotransmitter that is going to allow you to get your bloody lid back on so you're not flipping it. It's going to stop the production of stress hormones from your pituitary gland good stuff, releases good stuff that is going to help balance anxiety and depression, which again, anxiety, hypoarousal, or sorry, hypoarousal is your depression, hyperarousal is your anxiety. So we want to definitely mitigate that response. And exercise has been shown in many studies to be as effective as antidepressants. And then the last one is laughter, which is going to deactivate the sympathetic nervous system, which is like the gas pedal of the brain that's releasing all the stress hormones. The more you laugh, the better you are going to fight pain, emotional or physical. It has an adaptive function. And again, it's going to turn off the production of stress hormones. I really wanted to give you some really simple things because we can't do complicated things right now. It's very, very difficult because we're all in fight, flight, freeze, collapse right now. So I wanted to just to give you that. I'm going to leave you with this beautiful quote by Jeff Foster, giving you permission to stop being productive for a second because... You know, I have to tell myself this, by the way, because I'm such an over-functioner when I'm stressed out. So I have to give my permission, myself permission at least one day a week where I do absolutely nothing. And I say, my husband takes the kids and I just rest. We take turns on, on this. And then the last piece to, um, to do this work to regulate your, your emotions, you need to make room for your emotions. We, you can try to distract and suppress, but I, I'm sorry, they're gonna come back with a vengeance. Emotions were meant to be expressed. And when we lean into our feelings and we get comfortable with being uncomfortable, it's amazing that it's the less room that they, they start to take. It's this, this radical acceptance of that our feelings are serving a purpose and we need to lean into them. And it's okay to ask for help. There are many psychologists in the province, including my center, family counseling centers that are doing virtual and telehealth. And I know the government's putting a bunch of money into this right now for virtual services. So you don't actually have to go into an office. And then if that doesn't help, we are lucky enough to give you guys, and I'm gonna put these in the chat box. Hopefully I can figure out how to do that. Um, and apparently I can't do that right now. <laughs> With that, Tammy. Oh, there it is. If you need help, we are, the Institute of Child Psychology is offering courses on helping your kids. Um, we are developing literally a course right now on how to help parents with stress. So I just took a look at it this morning and it is bloody beautiful. So Melody's getting that ready for parents. And, but in the interim, I highly recommend, we have a short course called Fostering Emotion Regulation for Kids. <laughs> it's short, sweet, to the point, very skills-based. And to make this affordable for parents, we do have memberships. So you can just pay for like a month and then get take whatever you want from it. But uh, I'm hoping this was, and it was very short, um, but I just want to say that honestly, we, we Jody says this all the time, we can do hard things, okay? But give yourself some grace that we've never done this hard thing. So we're all just fumbling through this, trying to figure this out. And it's probably not very graceful for most of us. So and that thank much feel. Tammy, thank you for being honest with us about just your emotions through this, because I think many of us wonder, you know, <laughs> I would do so much better if I was a psychologist and it's just reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The that pandemic, it's a freaking <laughs> pandemic. Who does this well? But I think we're all going to come out of this with some lessons that we've learned too. So, Absolutely. yeah. I
agree more. Honestly, thank you so much, Tammy. You're a you're a real gift. Um, everything you're doing right now, just on the front line, um, we just appreciate it. And honestly, I'm a big fan of of the um, Institute of Child Psychology, and I'm a big fan of you. And I'm cheering you on as you keep uh, being brave yourself and helping us be brave. So. Everyone, I just want you to raise a hand up for Tammy.